Hey guys, and welcome back to a, another video. Today we are looking at another plugin. But before we get into that, I just want to ask you if you like this video or any of my videos, please subscribe and also, you know, hit the like button. Only 2% of people that watch my videos have subscribed, which is a little bit saddening, and it just means that you kind of don't get to see all the other videos when they come out. So that would be really, really cool if you subscribed. Now on to having a look at this plugin. So today we are looking at Arturia's Chorus June 6, which if you can't tell from how it looks and its name, it is a Roland Juno Chorus unit in a plugin. Basically my favorite chorus sound in a plugin. Now I've been using Tal Chorus, which is a free plugin pretty much, much since it came out. Pretty much, pretty much since it came out, whenever that was, you know, more than ten years ago, two thousand. I think Lux was two thousand twelve. Like bef so, before that, um, it's nearly on all my mixes. I have huge eighties nostalgia kind of stuff in my production, and I love the Tal chorus. So this is Arturia's kind of version of that chorus unit. Now Roland had these built in to the Juno, and then. So the Juno 60 and the Juno 106. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same uh, chorus unit on there. I think the Alpha Juno had chorus. But anyway, it was a slightly noisy, well, quite noisy really, uh, analog chorus, and it sounded phenomenal. I mean, Roland, just to me, uh, the king of choruses. The Dimension C was probably one of the best, like, multi-stage, well, not multi-stage, but multi-LFO chorus ever made. The CE2 is my favourite chorus sound for guitar. And I love it on everything, and like I said, I love the Juno Chorus. So we're going to put it on guitars. This track had the Tal Chorus on it originally. It was on each guitar individually. Um, I kind of do a thing with that where the left guitar has it set slightly different to the right guitar um, just to get a bit of a different feel, but of course you can just run stereo through it. So what we're doing is they're summed to a bus and we're running that stereo. We'll look at the features with the guitar. We'll put it on some synths as well as guitars, just so you can hear it. And then we might compare it to the Tal Chorus, because it is slightly different. Um, it does, with the different modes, it does sound a little bit different. So let's have a look at the features. So you can see here, it is nice and big. Uh, this is actually the full screen, and usually I zoom in. But what you can do is resize the window with all Arturia plugins, and you can use your numpad and whatever to do it, or you can do it with your mouse. And that's really cool. If you're like me with a massive, well, it's not massive, it's it's a normal size monitor, but it is 1440p, or if you've got a 4K monitor, uh, it helps to resize, especially in, if you're in Cubase, because Cubase, unfortunately, doesn't work very nicely with the Windows scaling. A Mac is fine, their scaling seems to work well, which means, you know, it's fairly zoomed out. So you can get it nice and big in your screen if you want, or you can tuck it away and have it nice and small so it's not getting in the way. Uh, so that's the main thing that's in all our Trio plugins. Then you have a switch here, on and off. You know, turn it on, turn it off. Uh, you have this mono in, which is really cool. So when you're using stereo signals, which is very common when you're mixing, I mean, sometimes you'll be using mono, but in Cubase for me, if you need stereo outputs, you need stereo inputs. Um, you can mono sum it. So we will try that on these guitars because they actually panned a hard left and right, we'll try it on the synths because sometimes a lot of things are in stereo and you might not necessarily want them to go into the chorus, you might want the chorus to do all the stereoizing if that makes sense rather than the actual stereo of the original sound, you can get different sounds that way, so it's a really cool feature to have and then you've got this main section. So on the original Juno chorus, you only had two buttons, one and two, that's it. No depth, no rate, nothing, you just put them on or off, it just sounded good, didn't sound good, it usually sounded good, and I mean with a Roland Juno synth, which we may actually try that if we have time, we might do that at the end, actually just use a little bit of a um, Juno style synth through it to see what it sounds like, um, but yeah, you had one or two and it generally just made everything sound good, and it made up for the fact that you didn't have multiple detuned oscillators. So you, you had very basic oscillation in the Juno synths compared to some of the huge um, mono synths that had multiple oscillators, but you know, they were mono synths. And because of the kind of 
polysynth architecture you had in the Juno, which was quite a, you know, not budget but very affordable kind of system, you couldn't have that huge detuning. So this made up for it and made everything sound fat. So normally you had one and two, which we've got here. Then you could jam the two buttons together, and we've got this here, which jams them together. To me, this doesn't actually sound much like other emulations I've heard or the Junos I've heard. It's a bit more vibrato -y, but that might have been the unit they modelled on just did that. Um, so that's an interesting effect. Then you have manual mode, which is really cool. So you can actually go in, if you think you don't like the rate and the depth of these two modes or the mix mode, you can go in and do it yourself. So you've got a way to lock it to the LFO if you want to lock it to the LFO, which is really cool. The only thing I'd say is there isn't, um, doesn't seem to be, at least for me, a readout when it comes to that, um, which is annoying because if I'm locking it to the LFO, I want to know what subdivisions I'm using. But anyway... Uh, or you don't have to. I prefer to use it manual. Some effects like tremolo and stuff, I love locking to the LFO, but often chorus and stuff, I'm going for a sound rather than an actual, the waves to be in time with the music. Um, then you've got a depth, of course, and then you've got this phase control. Now, the way this works is you have two LFOs, I believe, one for the left, one for the right, and the phase is basically how those waves are in phase with each other. So 0%, both waves will be doing the same thing, right? And as you adjust it, it'll go out a little bit, which makes it more stereo. So we'll test this when we go to a mono signal, and maybe with the mono in control, just to see what it does. And then you've got a mix control, and this is a true mix control. Now, some choruses have more of a level control. So 100% is actually 50-50, which is chorus. You've got the pitch side, and you've got the dry side. This appears to be a proper wet, dry control, so all the way up, is actually vibrato because it's only the LFO that changes the pitch. That's all you can hear. And then 50-50 is generally your perfect chorus sound, which is your dry and your vibrato sound mixed together gives that chorus sound. And then, of course, you can go more subtle. So most of the time, we're going to keep it here, but we'll have a listen to the other tones. So that's basically the plug-in. Let's get into some sounds because you're probably bored as hell with me not playing any sounds right now. So I've got it on these clean guitars. What we're going to do is loop them. Um, I'll keep it off and then we'll turn it on. Actually, we'll use the switch and we'll have a look at the different modes and some of the settings. This is bypassed. And let's put it on. Let's change that mix control. So you can hear how that's darker and it's just the vibrato. It's actually quite subtle in the one mode, and this is a bit more subtle than other plugins I've used. And as you mix it in, that's dry. Wait for it to, it's just gonna loop back around. We'll listen to dry. So yeah, 50-50 is your most chorus, like I said. Okay, let's listen to mode two. Okay, subtle, back to mode one. This is a bit faster, a bit more watery on mode two. It's actually quite slow on this mode one. Just listen carefully to the wave. Mode two. Bit wetter, bit faster, bit more kind of Leslie-like, still fairly transparent though. Bypass for reference. So it really does add something to it. And then both of them. Now this is so vibrato-y and not like I've ever heard on any Juno before. But again, I haven't used that many vintage units. I've only used a couple of 106s and 160. So this might be the unit they're modeling. It's definitely a very cool sound. So if we turn the mix all the way up for this, we've got this really cool dark vibrato vibe going on. Of course, then you can make it more subtle. Which works well, it's really cool. Uh, back to mode two, just so you can hear the difference. And mode one. Now we're gonna try the mono in, um, just to hear what some in these guitar guitars do. So if we go mono in, it makes 
everything, the dry signal and the wet single signal mono. So this is what you get if you put it on a double tracked mono guitar, I guess. So all of that width is just the chorus. So this is what you use if you have one guitar and you want wide kind of chorus sounds. We will put it on one mono guitar in a second so you can actually hear what I mean. And two. It's actually pretty cool there. And back to stereo. Okay, let's now quickly look at the manual mode. So this is where you get to control it yourself. We're going to just go through each of these controls. I think what we could start, we'll keep them at 180. I think 180 is the default phase, and when we get to that, we'll go through the phase. I think the best way to look at the phase is with the mono input, you're really going to hear it. So we'll switch it up to a different guitar when we get to the phase section, but just have let's have a look, comparative to 1 and 2, what we can do with the rate and depth. So let's put the depth all the way up so you can hear the extent of it. Very rich, nice and warbly. Let's bring all the rate all the way down. Almost flanger-like when it's this slow. You can really hear that movement. Let's bring that rate up slowly. I'll wait for it to loop around. That's where I tend to like choruses around there, but we're going to go to the extremes, so you can really hear. Let's go up a bit further. Now the depth's probably going to be a bit too much, and you want to bring the depth back as you get faster. The, kind of my rule with choruses is, the higher you go in rate, the lower the depth you go and vice versa. Okay, let's bring it up when we get round. Now you're getting into like broken tape territory. So if we bring that rate halfway, it's actually really cool. Let's bring it up to maybe three quarters so you can hear uh, these rates as they go mental. Let's see how fast it goes. It's almost ring modulator. It's awful with it up so high, but let's bring it back down. kind of a cool vibrato sound but if we bring the rate back down to a bit around here maybe that's another cool effect so if we compare that to one and two which we're doing in a second we wait for it to go around we'll compare it to one and two you can kind of hear we're setting your own chorus it's really cool so okay this is a good setting and then we'll go to a slow setting This is our manual setting. Compare that to one. Which is a bit slower. Let's compare it to two. Back to our manual setting. You can really hear the LFO there. Now we'll go to a slow and deep setting. Compare that to one and two. So leave it on two. And we go, it's the manual setting. There's a bit more rate in two. Similar, but you've got a bit more depth now in our manual setting. Just gonna let it play out.
So, so far with that manual control, you can really get some different sounds. Now, one and two do sound nice. I actually think I prefer the sound of the Tail Chorus LX when it comes to the depth and rate settings, one and two and the two together. But with that manual control, I can get way more sounds out of it by just manipulating the rate and depth. So let's go have a look at the phase control now. We're going to switch over to a, a little section. So this is a mono guitar. So we can listen to what this phase does. So you can hear how the mono is nice and wide with the stock settings to start with. Let's go to manual. Let's get really deep so we can really hear it. Bring the phase to zero. So that's basically mono now, right? So you can always treat it as like a stereo width control. Round halfway. And mono in mono doesn't make any difference because it's a mono signal. So we add the everything to it, I'm just going to bring these back a little bit. Now it's going to make less of a difference when you start doing stereo things, which we are doing, but let's just have a listen with all the stereo stuff on. So zero. And 180, which is full. Okay, but what about on some synths? I mean, it is designed for synths after all. So we are gonna go here, uh, where are my synths gone? We've got another Arturia plugin, which is Solina. Now I've turned the ensemble off. It's a very nice ensemble in there, but we're gonna use this instead. So let's just have a listen to, uh, I think we'll go back to the same section we had before. So this is no chorus. Still a nice sound though. I mean, it does have a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb on it. But let's add the chorus in. It's wider, prettier. Uh, I reckon we put it on number two for this. I know it just adds so much more to the sound. And that's the thing with a lot of these older synths is chorus just really gave them a lot more life that they didn't have because they were quite simple. So let's bypass it again. And the chorus back on. Ah. Oh. Those delays just going through, I don't know. For me, that's just that's just beauty. Uh, so we've got another synth we can have a look at and hear how it sounds on that. Uh, this is a bit more of a simple synth. This does have some stereo stuff going on already. And a little bit chorusing, I think. But let's hear it with the Juno 6. Now this could be cool with both modes on, let's have a listen. So bypassed. I think this has a phaser on it. Let's get back to it again. And put the Juno on. Maybe some vibrato. That's kind of cool. Maybe something way more subtle though. And you want to know what it sounds like on distorted stuff, so let's put it on this solo. Uh, where's the actual solo track? Yeah. So we have a solo here, distorted solo. Let's see what it does to that. I think we'll do manual mode. We'll have a mess around. We'll make it a bit more subtle. Just put it on. Instant stereo, right?
Okay, we turn it off. Just adds a little bit of width, a little bit of something. It's very nice. I just want to add it to the bass. I love chorus on the bass, and you can use uh, a little bit of stuff on the bass there. Let's just have a quick listen. You want it fairly subtle? Okay, cool. And then we roll it back here. So bypass. Just a little bit of movement. I might bring the face down a little bit. What you don't want is too much width on the low end. Because it just gets a bit messy. So if you go all the way mix, you can actually hear where it's going. I think that's wide enough. Bring the mix down. Off. Just adds a little something to it again. Like I said, I love chorus. Okay, everything together. So it might be a little bit too loud, maybe. Bring it down just a touch. So what I might try and do is turn off all the, the choruses. So let's get them all up. Okay, this is a note chorus. Let's put all the choruses on. Now there's just movement, there's a bit of life. So that has been our Chorus Chorus June 6. Thanks again for watching. It is a very, very nice chorus. Um, now, compared to the chorus from the Tal series, uh, it does sound a little bit different. We didn't really compare it in this video. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a bit of a my favourite chorus shootout, including some guitar chorus, especially on guitars. It'd be really, really fun to maybe do that with a bunch of stereo chorus plugins, some free, some paid, some part of plug-in packs, all of that. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see a bit of a guitar chorus kind of shooter. We could probably put other things through it, synths and stuff as well. Mainly for me, I synths, like this classic kind of Juno synth, and guitars is what I use chorus on. Um, sometimes I like to put it on a bit of reverb and a bit of strings as well, but that's very much where my chorusing lies. Uh, so that's what I want to kind of compare at some point. So again, yeah, let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.